Good morning and welcome to Locked In Stitches. My name is Julie Hall and I am with you as always for this Tuesday morning class. I hope you are all doing well today and staying out of the heat. Um, Canberra had a sweltering one yesterday and um, sorry I'm just looking to make sure I've got everything going right here um, but today we're supposed to get a storm and it's all going to change but I will say I am sitting in my office in air conditioning and I'm not planning on going anywhere good morning Lynn and Pauline and Danielle thank you for joining us okay so today we are going to do the double zip pouch. Um, I'm loving the project and the girls and I went out on the weekend because school starts for us next week and let me go over to where my handwork is. Um, so we went into spotlight planning on skull and crossbone fabric and what we came out with was rainbows and bees so on Thursday night I'll do the bee one and today I'm working on rainbows for grace um, now in the instructions you will get a cutting guide I have come through and I've cut all my fabrics Emma has asked for hers to be um, just in the one color so it's all going to be done in the rainbows what I do have to be careful of however is making sure that all of my rainbows go in the one direction that would not be good so hopefully I can remember that as I'm paying enough attention and Patricia Bramford thank you for joining us Bev Keeler Lorraine Claude Lorraine Henry thank you for joining us so I've got my two pieces of zipper here and because it's such a nice bright fabric I'm going to use white zipper now when we were talking last week I was saying how Grace wants one of these bags but she wants it with a hole so that she can have the bag closed up keep her earbuds in here and have the earbuds basically hook in within the pouch and I do love that idea and what I found in my stash was a large grommet um, almost like sort of a curtain grommet um, but this one is metal and just a little bit classier um, and it was something that I've just bought at a show many years ago and what I'm going to attempt to do is to install this grommet once we have completed the project below the line of the um, back pocket so that then that can just go through. I looked at smaller grommets and we've got Maxine joining us as well. Good morning. Um, I looked at some of the smaller grommets that I had and the reason whilst this one is a little bit larger than what I need I'm going with it because the other ones were just too small and they wouldn't have fit the um, the first part of or the um, um, the head of the earbuds through we're going to talk about how I've done the D rings here however what I got in this week and they're up on the website now are these gorgeous side clamps and I'm going to pop a side clamp on this project right up the top here which will then um, replace the use of the D-ring so either is fine I just really want to play with new toys um, so you do need a hoop size and the design size for this one is um, just under 200 tall and it's 120 wide uh, good morning Gwen Smith 
And Kathy Dillian, thank you for joining us. Um, and I am using my 230 by 230 hook. Um, so, as I said, I've got all of my fabrics cut and starched. And, you know, I've used the good old just ironing starch, just the standard stuff. Uh, Lynn Robinson, good morning. Thank you for coming in today. And so now we can start thinking about stitching. And I'm going to come over to my machine. Oh, don't you love it when a plan comes together? And Jan a Boston. Jan, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, um, but thank you so much for joining us. So what I've got here is just basic tear away in the hoop. I've got Gutemann sewing thread in the top because it is all just construction and I've got mine in white. Now there are 17 colours in this project, but all it is there to do is to prompt us to do something. So I'm going to come through and stitch out colorway one. And colorway one is going to show the entire outline for the pouch and the placement line for the first zipper. And good morning, Wanda. Thank you for joining us. Now, think about what way you want your bag to open because that will depend on how you want your zipper to be placed. And I want mine to open from, and I'm just trying to, so the girls seem to wear theirs on the left hand side. So I need that to open from right, from left to right. And the other important thing is to make sure both zippers go in the same direction. Okay. And I hold my zipper over that placement line and colorway two is gonna stitch down to hold that in place. Lynn Aldridge, thank you for joining us. Colourway 3. Now I just want to be a little bit careful with this. I've probably come down and accidentally collected a little bit too much of the zipper there. So I need to see whether that's going to cause a problem. And it's not going to cause a problem. You see it's just not quite caught there. But that is okay because the next set of stitches are going to be a little bit further down as well. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is come through and attach the bottom section of our project. Now, what I've got here is I've got my fabric and I've attached a... Um, lovely little gold handmade label because Emma has chosen a really thin fabric I have added a piece of embroiderer's felt to the two front sections as well as the back section and that is just so that it um, it has a little bit more stability and oomph to it so you want to lay that fabric down on top of the outline 
and we are now stitching colourway 4 which is going to hold that down okay so we now have the front of our project there what we now do need to do is come through and put in the back of our pocket and I just want to avoid if I can you guys having to look at my flabby arms so I want my back pocket piece and it's just another piece of my fabric and I'm going to lay that over the stitching line and I'm going to secure it with magna pins. So flats on the back of course and outside of the stitching area which is just going to be across the top here. And we return that to the hoop. And stitch colorway five which is then going to hold that layer down. Okay, now the next layer that we are going to place on is going to be the back of that pocket. So again I'm going to come through and undo my hoop and I want my back pocket piece which is this piece here again and what I want to do here is make sure that that is totally covered but it needs to be face down so that when you open the pocket you see the inside there and again I'm going to use my magna pins and this is going to stitch all the way around this pocket area. So we need to make sure that the pins are holding it, not where the stitches are going to occur. And I just want to smooth that out as I go. and then I can come through make sure at this stage that your zipper tab is within the design parameters if it is outside you will have totally stuffed this bit up and you can see already that that has caught that in the correct spot our first pocket created. Now I'm trimming as I go just to make things easier on myself and I'm also now just going to take out those extra magnet pins. Okay so the next part that we're going to do is the top main zipper. So I want to come through 
and stitch colorway seven, which is going to show us where that zipper is going to be. Belle Aikens, thank you very much for joining us from Tennessee in America. And I always like to just check and make sure which way things are going to go there. Bring my zipper in and it's always find it easiest if that zipper can be as flat as possible. Now sorry you're looking at my arm here. Colourway number nine will then take the top of the zipper and stitch it down. And now we're up to adding the fabric between these two areas. So what we are going to do is and I've got my fabric here again this is a piece that I've extra reinforced with a little bit of embroiderous felt the trick that I'm trying to do with this is to make sure that my color alignments are coming through so I'm just going to be a little bit fiddly here and then what I need to do and sorry I'm just see this is what happens when you don't read your own instructions okay uh, stitch and what we want to do is come through and I'm going to be pausing as I come through here Just trying to get the right. So I've stitched the top there, and then what I need to do is come and fold that down once the top is stitched so that we can stitch right through all of those layers. See what happens when you take a weekend off, you just forget everything. And that is my zipper there all beautifully held together. Now, if you are going to use the D-rings, like I've used here, what you're going to do is make a um, rouleau for those D-rings and this is where you're going to attach it. So, colourway 11 shows where that placement should be and this is of course in the instructions and then colorway 12 is going to stitch that down and what who else we got here Noreen Andrews from New Zealand welcome um, and then colorway 13 and 14 are going to do the exact same thing because I am using the side clasps I'm not going to do that part so the next thing I need to do is to remove my hoop excuse the arm here guys it's just so much easier doing it with that arm and 
what I now want to do is put my lining piece on to the back here and I've got my lining piece and the trick with the linings is always to make sure that you are covering that set of stitches that we've used to hold down the top layer and then we want to use again our magna pins oh, it would help if I put them right side down though to hold that in place and we're only going to be stitching across the top line here make sure it's flat as you replace it in the hoop and then stitch colorway 15 which is going to hold that down and Carolyn Lindsay is here from Nevada Nevada is one of those places that I really want to go to. Um, I, I would love to have a tacky Vegas wedding. Nothing, not meaning to call your state tacky. Please don't get me wrong. Um, just the wedding that I want is tacky. Um, we celebrated 18 years yesterday. Then we can take, once again, those magnet pins off. Make sure everything is connected at the back the way we want. And now we are going to lay our pocket. So the back pocket is the longest piece of fabric and it has been folded over. And we are going to place it over that outline. Now you can choose how far down you want that to be. I'm going to set it about an inch down from the top of the pouch. Then on top of that and once again we are still making sure that all of our fabrics are going in the same direction is our back piece and that is going to cover the entire project. Once we've got those pieces in place we are going to come through and return our hoop And the one thing I think I forgot to do is come through and check that that zipper is in the right place. That would be an absolutely embarrassing stuff up. So make sure that zipper is in the middle. Phew, I'm glad I checked that. And then stitch. Oh, Pauline's saying her husband like they her husband and she got married in Vegas. I would love to redo our vows. And Edward reckons the only way that he would do that is um, if he could have them done in Klingon. So our version of a great fun wedding would be um, Elvis impersonator speaking Klingon. Is there something for everybody?
but no, our first wedding was, you know, all fine and good. My mother and my sister arranged it. It was, you know, I married the man I wanted to. It was all good. But weddings to me are so difficult to be about the couple getting married because there's just so much work and effort and it was a 43 degree day and we were just thrilled when the whole thing was over. Now, what I love about this is there is only um, one more colorway. And that colorway is our backing piece. So I am going to come through and move that hoop forward again. Turn the design over. Here I have my backing piece, which I can lay over that outline. So this is the inside lining for the entire pouch. I'm going to secure that again with the magna pins. final colourway which is going to come around again but is going to leave a hole here which is where we turn the project right side out. Hello to Irene Coker from, now is that Southern California? Valhilia, thank you for joining us. Suzanne, Suzanne Reem, thank you for joining us. No, I am still live. Maybe I just sound like a robot, darling. Now, at the same time, I am going to heat up my iron. And ta-da, all of our stitching is done. So, I'm going to take this out of the hoop and let's come and look at it at the table. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of that excess stabilizer. Good morning, Marie Goodman. Glad to see you. On Friday afternoon at, I think about 3 p.m., um, they opened the borders from New South Wales to the ACT. So my husband and son, well, not that my son came with us, so that my husband could visit without having to go into isolation afterwards. So we very quickly packed up and on Saturday morning drove up to see dad and to get the kids Christmas presents So what I'm going to do is come through and trim around the project and I want to leave extra space here where we've got our opening So we had a lovely time catching up with dad and my nieces um, 
my sister and her husband came over for dinner one night so and that was good like we we've got the anniversary of um of mum's death of mum and my brother's death this week so um it was important for all of us to um to catch up with each other um so we had a lovely evening but you know driving home yesterday in the heat of the day god that stuff starts taking it out of you now that i'm older okay so now that i've got that opening i want to remove all of the excess fabric everything that is not part of that opening because otherwise our seams just start getting too thick so i come through and i just get rid of that and this is what i'm left with i press at every stage i am a compulsive presser uh wow we've got lots of people from overseas today we've got dawn lily from west virginia i have never been to west virginia is it a lovely area and now we start the fun part of turning the project in the right way and that can take a little bit of work and a little bit of fiddling your colored thing will come in very helpful here as soon as I work out where I've put mine this is normally one of those parts that I really dislike doing actually you know where I've heard West Virginia that old song um um John Denver country roads that's where I think of West Virginia okay so what we've now got is our pouch being turned inside out and I'm just coming through and pulling those edges out as nicely as I can and then again we'll come and do the pressing thing and we are going to remove the excess stabilizer from the zipper area and the important thing that we want to do here is so this is on the side of our bag we want to come through and fold over that seam nicely and you can choose to either hand stitch that closed or you can do what I do and use the double sided no heat basting tape now what I love about this and all I do is pull that seam out as nicely as you can so we put the tape in the middle there what I love about this tape is that it will stick without heat but when you then apply heat, it sticks even better. <laughs> yep, you got the same thing, Gwen. You've got um, um, you've got John Denver in your um, in your mind as well. You'll be singing that going to bed tonight. Um, Noreen Andrews is asking, is that tearaway stabilizer? Absolutely. So it's the stabiliser that I use with about 90% of what I do. And what we want to do is just get the start of that picked up. And then squeeze that down. 
And now this is not how I would join clothing together. Please don't get me wrong. But for an internal seam on a bag, it is just perfect. So that is my seam pulled together. Now I'm going to come through and open up that zip and turn the bag inside out. I have a lot of people ask if I needed to go to all the trouble of turning it out nicely on the first turn when I'm only going to be turning it out again on this one. I find that you get a better result second time if you've done it perfectly that first time. So my answer is generally yes. By the same token, I'm not at your house, I can't see you. Poke your tongue out for better um, results. So one of the reasons I've worked on Emma's first is because she's cooking my dinner tonight, so I thought she deserved something nice. Now, if I undo this zipper in the centre, I can remove that excess stabiliser. I wish I had thought, I'm not sure what's happened to my thing, I might have been using it in the lounge room the other day, um, and forgotten to bring it back, but I need, I do need to poke through the edges and have that come through nice and square. But you can see there what we are starting to do. Now, as I said before, the other thing that I want to do with this one is to come through and put this grommet on. Now, this is going to be a learning experience for all of us because I have not used this grommet before. Uh, Christine, I absolutely would use my thang if I knew where I put the damn thing. I really, really wish um, that I could work out. Oh, and look at that. There the silly thing is. Okay. So I need to go and spend some time taking that out. Uh, what brand of tape do I use? I, strangely enough, use the one that I sell. It is an un... Um, there's, there's not a like a brand name like a Fiskars or an anything like that to it. It is a fabric. Um, it is one that is specifically for fabric and it doesn't leave any residue. And you can find that under the tools on our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm thinking that if I want that hole to be, and I might even go for more in the middle here, I am going to come through. Uh, Dawn Lily is asking, is the fabric cotton or vinyl? My fabric is cotton. Um, I found it's a nice one to, um, to work with. Emma basically used this pouch all last year. Um, and the leather strap on it broke before the pouch did. The only reason she's getting a new one is because she wants a different colour. Um, so I've made the hole using that inner piece and I'm going to come through and cut through all of those layers. And the best way to do that is just to fold that in half and do a little bit of a snip. And because I've got three different layers in there, I think it's going to want slightly sharper scissors. 
the reason that I want the hole out of the pocket area is so that it's just not visible. And then what I've got here is that is the first part of my grommet and you can see how if I then attach this metal area and I pull those two apart And then what we need to do is fold those edges down and I'm just going to use my pliers for that. Um, if you had a um, um, sort of a small hammer or re realistically any sort of tool will do. I'm trying to twist this so that you guys can see this as I'm doing it. I apologise if I'm not being clear. So the goal for this is simply that it is something for the um, either the charger or, and just because I want to flatten that really well, um, it is something that either the charger or the um, earbuds can sit through and charge their device. So, starting to look better. You can see, you can just kind of see a tiny little lip on that, but that's not too bad. The last thing that I want to add are my side clamps. And what I like about the side clamps is it's just again that upping the level of professionalism of the project. So what I'm doing is just making sure that that is not going to impinge on the zipper. And the side clamps make things really nice and easy because all we do is pop that on the side and it comes with its own set of screws and I was quick enough to go and steal a screwdriver from hubby before we started. He's at home again this week and um, makes it a lot more difficult to steal crap when he's at home. And we screw through those layers and that holds it securely. And so that's that side done. And you really cannot take that off. It'll come through. And what I find I need to do is to put it on and then slide it up into position, particularly when you're looking at um, extra bulk of fabric. Next Tuesday is going to be a great day in the Hall household. Edward goes back to work on Monday and um, I think Cameron starts senior campus um, on Monday and the girls go back on Tuesday. So Monday will be the dance of joy. Oh, sorry, Tuesday will be the dance of joy when you join us. And that is then complete. 
So what I like to do, um, I buy a leather strap and the leather strap that I've got for Emma's, because she's a huge fan of the color blue, I've got this strap that just clicks on and her back to school pouch is completed. So there's room at the front for the bus pass and we put the bus pass in and then we just keep it in there. We don't, um, we don't even take it out to get on the bus. All we do is come through and tap it onto the machine. The phone is in here. Realistically, unless they've got messages, they shouldn't then have to access that. Um, we keep it closed so that we don't lose the phone or it drop out. And we've got a hole there that we can use to put the um, um, earbuds cable in. The other way that you could do the hole is to just use a buttonhole. Um, and that would work perfectly well as well. Um, Lynn got mad. Fantastic name, Lynn. Um, the straps I am going to stock some of. I'm just waiting for my stock to arrive. Um, the um, So this hardware I've already got. The handmade tags I've got. Um, the grommets, because it's a one-off project, Spotlight would be your best answer or your local craft shop would be your best answer for that one. Um, the other thing that I'm going to make this week is a um, face mask out of the same fabric that can sit in the back there and then wherever she goes, if she needs a face mask, it will always be there. Okay, now a couple of other things that I just wanted to show you. Next week, we are doing oh, um, editing designs. And I am going to edit, um, and the designs that I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you how I edit both on my... Um, digitizing software so how we can use our software to join those designs to make a larger design and how we can do the exact same thing on our machines um, I am actually going to do another chair um, and that way ideally it will keep hubby slightly happy um, the other ones I know I've been showing you along the way what um, what different projects I have been working on with the um, Zen Animals designs. I've got the ostrich, which I need to start looking at, um, at doing my test stitch out. I finished that this weekend. And the other one that I've just started working on. Now, this guy already is 20,000 stitches. So just so that you're aware of how many stitches go into something. And the for anybody who wasn't with us on Thursday, I was able to show off how the turtle looked. Again, this is blue metallic thread. Um, and I'm thinking that is just stunning. I actually went and bought some couch, um, not couches, I went and bought some cushions um, from Kmart, some fairly large ones. They've got a zipper opening on them and they're in a suede sort of a look. I'm going to pull them, um, I'm going to unstitch them and embroider them and then put them back together and that's what I'm going to do with this project which we're going to do at the end of February. Um, other than that my week was kind of boring I feel like I didn't get a lot done um, but we have lots of cool stuff of course coming up I love hearing ideas and suggestions somebody suggested last week that I add in a um, bullion roses with the embroidery machine 
so a really dimensional type of embroidery and so I'll be looking at adding that in the months to come as well but other than that this is our project and how nice and simple is it um, I'm loving it I'm hoping Emma will love it as well um, I also live in hope that this will mean that they will um, answer the phone when I call but you know you gotta take what you can get um, so until next week have a stitching day as always if you've got any questions please feel free to either put them on the locked in stitches group or to email me at sales at juliehalldesigns.com okay until next time have a stitching day bye <laughs>